All right, now something is very clear that when it comes to education, you can use every platform to channel some one or two information to the people. So today, we are taking a different turn, not necessarily the usual showbiz or entertainment that we have been giving to you on this platform. We are talking about youth unemployment, which I know you and I, we have been affected by it. And because it is an election year, what decision are you making towards who you are even likely to vote for? Let's talk some current affairs here on Sami Flex TV. My name is Sami Flex and I have a special person. But before I get to him, let me give shout outs to my producers and directors. Here I'm talking about Richie Flex and the digital rasta aka Currency. Let me start from when he was doing music. Um, when he was doing music, he was a member of a group called Echo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not sure he wants to be referred to as an ECHO member now. Yeah. Uh, so now let's come to what really is happening now. He is managing a TV channel. Yes. That is the Pan-Africa TV. And again, he has one of the toughest current affairs programs on the platform. What's the name of the program? It's called Good Morning Africa. All right. So Good Morning World. <laughs> <laughs> because I know everywhere yeah, yeah. people are watching us on Yours this platform. Yeah. His name is Kwame. Dance Thank you very much, Sammy. Thank you, Pedasipa. Yeah. Now you're looking like some member of parliament. Oh, oh no, 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 no. That, that's reality. <laughs> Thank you. When I came and I saw, I said, "Hey, who is this? <laughs> who is this minister <laughs> waiting for me to sign some check for me?" Very soon. We <laughs> <laughs> signing checks. I but, know, but, I know, uh, I know. But, but thank you. I mean, you are one of the people who gave me um, a dog's chance. You know, at the time when I wanted to rebrand from music to what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And I think that I've taken the time to appreciate you on Facebook, but it's not enough. I'm sure at the right time on different platforms, I will be able to memorialize and eulogize you very well so that wow. the, the world will know wow. who you are, what you stand for, and how uh, you've been able to position some of us. I know. Thank you so much. Thank Even you. with the plan, the, yeah. the, the good mind you have on me alone, I know it is a blessing. Yeah. I have just too many issues. That's why I invited you on this platform. It yeah. is called The Real Talk. Mm -hmm. Here we don't talk lies. Okay. We talk about realities. Okay. That is what we do. Okay. First mm -hmm. is the year 2020. Right. It is an election year. Right. And I know so many youthful people, apart from following Shatawale, Stoneboy, Sarkodie, and the rest of them, we also have a choice. Mm. We have a choice with the power of the tongue. So, what are the young stick we should be considering before going to the polls? That's a very good question. Eh? Straight to the head, straight mm -hmm. to the point. Um, we have no time to waste. Right. Um, let me quickly say that um, it is very good mm -hmm. to support Sarkodie, Stoneboy, Shatawali, Kevin Boy, uh, Bisa K Day, um, Joey B and all of that. It's very good. I mean, um, they are doing something positive for the nation and they are representing um, the country. And that's what we are always looking for, for us to be able to have people who represent us across, across mm -hmm. the world. Um, but also, we should, it should not be lost on us that okay. in the same vein as we are supporting these wonderful arts, mm -hmm. we must also zero in on the things that affect us directly, sure. which has to do with politics. And I'm saying politics affects us directly because whoever it is that we vote into power creates or brings out policies that directly affects us, mm -hmm. whether directly or indirectly. But some way, somehow, there's uh, some form of influence that those policies have on, on, on Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. And so we have a very critical role to play. Mm -hmm. as Ghanaians and as young Ghanaians to be able to make decisions that will inform who is going to lead us in the next elections mm -hmm. or who is going to emerge mm -hmm. you know victorious in the next uh, in, the, in the 2020 election. elections which is just about a few months um, mm -hmm. um, away now Ghanaians and, I, and I'm talking about the, the, the youth have a very huge responsibility to play and I think oftentimes the conversation has always been about whether we are interested or we are not interested mm -hmm. and mostly we are not but interested but because yes we are interested. Yes. Maybe we are not ready to do the legwork. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, some, some, and I've had the occasion to speak to a few of them. Most people are not interested at all. Okay. You they speak don't to a few. Want to hear they don't the want to hear NDP anything. Yes. Discussion. But, but that is the point of departure for me. Um, to the extent that everything that happens in this country affects you, you must be interested. Mm. To the extent that if you are not interested, whoever emerges as the winner, you know, in the next elections, will represent you you must have a say in whatever it is that you do. Mm -hmm. To the extent that all the policies that emanate from these leaders directly affect you, mm -hmm. you must be interested. And Good. so I find it very interesting and very sad when we have young people who say that I'm not interested in politics, I don't want to have anything to do with politics at all. Mm -hmm. But you see, it is also very important <coughs> to acknowledge the fact that these people who are saying they're not interested in politics have a point. 
And they have a point because if you look across the political divide, all the political parties that we've had, um, save a few of them, mm -hmm. they have not really dealt with the issues, the bread and butter issues affecting the, the ordinary, the ordinary Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Mm. And therefore, it is important, you know, to admit, although, um, you know, in disagreement, that people will now come out to say that they don't want to be involved in politics at all. Okay. If you look at youth development, for instance, mm -hmm. um, over the period we've had conversations and, I'm, and, and I've been very involved um, and, and I've eloquently, you know, passionately spoken about how we have to develop the youth in this country. If you look, mm -hmm. at, if you look at the population now, it's relatively a youthful population. Good. So one would have thought that all the governments that we've had would have focused specifically on youth development. Mm -hmm. But what we are seeing now is that they don't focus holistically on youth development. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, knee-jerk um, policies and, and, and events that will help them win the next elections. Mm -hmm. But they don't and think all, about... And all these are just... For, for just specific, the Yes. <clears throat> But the, big, the problem is bigger. The problem is bigger because, one, we don't have a national development plan. Mm -hmm. We don't have a national development plan, and we don't have a national youth policy. Now, the national youth, the national development plan must have elements that will find expression in national youth, pol youth policy. policy. Mm -hmm. And agric policy, for instance, health policy, mm -hmm. education policy, and all of that. So everything that is being done is done off the back of political parties' manifestos. Mm -hmm. And those political parties' manifestos are specific to political parties. Because bear in mind that, whether we like it or not, we have two leading political parties, which is the NDC and the MPP. Mm -hmm. Now, the NDC describe themselves as a social democratic party. The MPP describe themselves, and I think it's very clear, that they are capitalist parties. Mm -hmm. So what about policies that, they, policies that they bring out are policies that are capitalist in nature. Mm -hmm. And NDC will bring policies that are socialist, socialist in, nature. in nature. So you find that there are so many discrepancies and there are so many disagreements relative to whichever policies that they bring out, which is why we have not been able to have um, a consolidated, you know, holistic discussion, holistic conversation mm. on bringing out a national mm. development plan. Now, if you check the history, you realize that J.J. Rowley started something like that. He wanted to bring a national development plan because that is how, you know, the country will be able to move from where it is now to a different level. When the MPP came into power, when President, former President Kufo came to power, he rampaged it, bought his own policy. Mm -hmm. Now, when the NDC came back into power, he rampaged it, they bought their own policy. Mahama and uh, Mills also bought their own policy. Now, it was put together, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you remember the famous Sinchi meeting that was mm -hmm. had, mm -hmm. for us to have a holistic document mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. will be a guiding tool for us going forward. That, when the MPP assumed the reins of power, was yeah, also, also brought it away. So, we yeah. are in serious crisis now because the development of the youth is far remote or removed from the conversations that we've been having regarding how we want to govern the state or how we want to govern the country and its people mm -hmm. and so we must begin to have such conversations now i'm saying that the youth are very critical because if you look at the population and i think i made this one earlier that right now about 60 percent of the youth I mean, of the, of, of, of the population are in a youth bracket. Mm -hmm. What it means is that if you don't find a way of developing the next generation, you would rather develop them in negativity. Now, they will turn out to be leaders that will further derail the trajectory of growth that we've been experiencing now. Mm -hmm. And that is a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. If you drive around, I'm sure, Sammy, you drive around a lot because sure. you just moved from East Legon to here. <laughs> and I'm sure you see people selling on the streets of Accra. You see people trying to clean your windscreen by force. By force. You see people selling dog chains and knives and all of that on the streets of a crowd. These are people I describe as, as army in waiting. Let anything get spark, a little spark, and all of these people will build arms and they will begin to, you know, cause mayhem. And that is not what we want to see. So we must begin to focus our attention and all our energies towards having a policy that will address the myriad of challenges confronting the average Ghanaian and youth. Mm. Now, the entertainment industry has provided a little, very li little, to a very limited extent, some solutions in addressing, you know, the menacing the development mm -hmm. of unemployment we have in this country. Mm -hmm. And I also must commend the knee-jerk reaction of this government in creating what the, the NAPCO and, and, you know, and its uh, 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 allies. Twins. Yes, and its twins. Um, I'm in, sure in, we can add yeah. the, those who are doing the planting for food and jobs, traffic, uh, traffic wardens, and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a knee jerk reaction because there is no law 
that is backing it fully to ensure sustainability. Most, most, um, most of times, governments come with policies, but are, there's no sustainable plan. And so you realize that it is just a means, but not an end. So they start the process, but there's no sustainable plan attached to the, the hatching of that concept. And mm. so it falls, within, it falls in the middle of the ocean, and it can't navigate its way around. Okay. So there's always a problem with that. Mm. So what I'm saying really is that we must begin to um, reorient the minds of young Ghanaians into appreciating the important role, the critical role that they have regarding how we can move this nation forward and how we can benefit from the spoils okay. of, our, of our nation. Now, now let's break it down again um, because some of our people might be new to this discussion. Maybe I am Sammy Flex. Um, I just completed uni. I have my degree. Um, I have been writing letters with brown envelopes here and there, here and there, here and there. I have been with um, NPP government for the past three years, maybe the fourth year. Nothing for me. It is time for me to make a decision. What are the things I should consider? First of all, even in their manifestos, yeah. before I go to the polls. That's also a very critical question, Sam. Thank you very much for this question. <laughs> you see, what must inform our decision into picking who would lead us should primarily be based on policies. Mm -hmm. Policies that directly benefit you. Policies that directly benefit your grandmother in the village. Mm -hmm. Policies that directly benefit the, the farmer who lives in Achimasa, for instance. Mm -hmm. Policies that benefit the driver who drives on the street. Mm -hmm. Policies that benefit the person who does not have the means to fly his children abroad to seek medical attention. Mm -hmm. So it must be a policy-driven um, agenda. Uh, agenda. Fantastic. Agenda. And so for the young person, you must begin to ask yourself very pertinent questions. Provoke the questions, provoke the answers. What is it that this particular um, party is presented in their manifesto that will address my problem. Mm -hmm. We have to be selfish in, in dealing with this because you see, <laughs> you being selfish as a young person mm -hmm. is not only limited to you and what you will benefit. It expands beyond your selfishness because if I'm saying that we need more jobs as a young person, I'm being selfish, right? Mm -hmm. But that also moves beyond the periphery of your selfishness to mm -hmm. the next person because the next person who's also a young person needs jobs. Need job. mm. So we must begin to interrogate these policies critically and move away from the extreme polarized partisanship where because my mother is an MP, you know, by all means. But, but can, we, can, we, can we really do away with but, that? But you see, Knowing where we live. But I, I granted, but you see something. Because I know one Ashanti boy I work with. Yes. His name is Karen Yes. No matter what you do, you he, will, he'll be NPP. But the point is that, has he really seen real change, real benefit from emanating from the NPP? If yes, no problem. But if no, what must you do to ensure that we bring into full force another party or another government that will address the challenges of the people. You see, the struggle of currency mm -hmm. is not different from the struggle of Kwame Usuda mm -hmm. as a young person. But it, they, some of them, they don't even recognize the struggle. They, they still think that, okay, this is for us. It's a legacy of a sort. Let's protect it. Yes, but I'm saying that at some point, mm -hmm. we must begin to change the narrative. We must begin to move away from our inclinations and what, you know, politically we feel is right for us to do. Mm. I feel that we must, that you see, the conversation must be moved from that perspective to a national perspective, which is why, if you recall, prior to independence, we had very young people who were actively involved in a struggle to ensure mm -hmm. that we gained independence. Mm -hmm. Those people, I'm sure, had their own political uh, leanings mm -hmm. and had their own um, ideological understandings or underpinnings. But when it came to the fight for independence, in as much as I can agree that there were some differences mm -hmm. okay the the end game was one that the the the, the cpp at the time wanted independence mm -hmm. the ugcc at the time mm -hmm. also wanted independence yeah. albeit that one wanted it now the other wanted it later yeah. but it still doesn't negate the fact that the direction was the same that we all wanted independence mm. now the point i'm trying to address here is that if we have admitted that all the young people in ghana have peculiar challenges interest mm -hmm. the peculiar challenges <clears throat> sorry which finds in expression in the general problems that we are facing right then we must begin to have conversations which are united we must have a unified front we must 
conglomerate in our um, in our thinking mm. so as to be able to push the narrative and change the narrative and speak truth to power, put the feet of government to the fire of responsibility. That is the only way we can get real change. I see. I now, 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 let, let, let me add this. Because you are saying we should come together, have the same front and push. I remember when the art industry was not getting the necessary or the due recognition in the manifestos and again even in the budget reading, we started pushing. Once again, we came up with that unified front. They started putting us small, small elsewhere. They were right. We will read. Still, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what the NPP did. They wrote in their manifesto that they were going to give us um, theaters in all the 10 regions of Ghana. They are going to refer base some, some of them. They even promised to build new ones. They were all written in their manifesto. Makwami, you and I, this is the fourth year mm -hmm. of their reign. Yeah, Nothing I mean, has happened. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure we can boast of anything. See, the one that they said they've renovated to meet multi international standard. usage in uh, Kofoidia. Yeah. We've been there. But Sami, it's, 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 it's very simple and non, okay? Mm -hmm. That is a big to, English. I mean, it's <laughs> essential. <laughs> it, it, is, it is essential <laughs> to now begin to interrogate the issues. Mm. Now, if government comes and says that I'm going to be giving you one district, one factory, for instance, mm -hmm. I'm going to be giving you theaters across the country, mm -hmm. and it fails to do so, what do you do as an individual? Do you ask the right questions? Do you look them in the face and tell them that you promised us A, B, C, D, you have failed woefully mm -hmm. in providing safe? We don't but do we, that. We've been asking. We I'm, don't I'm, do sure, that. I'm sure on several but, but platforms. Fantastic. We've been but asking see, the minister, have, have we? the deputy. And they are still. Some, I remember when the deputy minister, that is Dr. Ziblin, yeah. was asked, oh, You guys said you're going to build um, theaters around there. He said, Oh, we did not say we were going to build. Mm -hmm. He rather used the word we're going to renovate. Yes. And even the renovation, mm -hmm. ask yourself, what has been done? Fantastic. But you see, but the beauty in democracy is elections. Mm -hmm. That is the only way we can make Reg people register. accountable. Mm for the pronouncements they made mm -hmm. prior to the assumption of power and whether or not they've been able to fulfill the same. Mm. Now, we have, we will the power as, people, as a people mm -hmm. and we must not be divided in our thoughts to know and to appreciate the power that we wield. To say that, well, we gave you a long rope. You said we're going to do A, B, C, D. You have failed in delivering on your mandate. What it is is that in the next elections, we are not going to vote for you. Because it is a policy-driven campaign. Let people suffer mm -hmm. for their own actions and inactions. Mm -hmm. Let people begin to smell pepper mm -hmm. for their own actions and inactions. Let people know that you as an individual, you have so much power mm -hmm. without which they cannot assume the reins of power. Mm -hmm. When we are able to appreciate and know the powers that we have as individuals, as citizens of Ghana, then we'll begin to speak truth to them. Then we'll begin to push them around for them to deliver on their promises. Mm. Now let me tell you what happens. Mm -hmm. It is a deliberate creation. And I know that most people who are watching us right now will appreciate that, look, the, all the governments that we've had, and I'm not limiting it to only one political party. Okay. I, I, will be, I will not be charitable with the facts. Government. Let me be very <clears throat> honest and candid, like you said, your, your platform. Real talk. Real talk. Mm -hmm. All the governments that we've had, try to do something but they don't do what the people really need for instance if you went to the villages right now what do they really need mm. few hospitals here and there few cocoa roads constructed mm. some amenities some amenities mm. public uh, uh, toilets mm. you know and and and, 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 what, and these are very basic things do they get those things mm -hmm. now the political class mm. continue to impoverish the less privileged people to the advantage mm -hmm. because if the people are impoverished if the people continue to be poor as a result if of bad policies needs. if they have needs if they have want then they will come and cajole them mm -hmm. okay into voting for them for the next election because they will come and give you 20 Ghana cities yeah. because you don't have the means t-shirts t-shirts when they come and they give you 20 Ghana cities a bag of rice you will go and vote for them but I'm happy for one thing that happened, I think, in the central region or so. Yeah. When the people said that, look, we don't need bags of rice. It, it Bring us the real development. It did not happen only in the central region. I think it, it also happened somewhere in the Shanti region. Yes. Where I go go also. Exactly. Uh, so, the people, the Muslims, they chased one member of parliament like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. The will of the people is like a tsunami. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful a force 
that no government can, if they want to win power, belittle that power that the people have. It is like a it's a force. But you see, we don't know the power that we wield. It appears we don't we have not really placed a lot of premium on the thumb that we have and how powerful that thumb can be. Which is why mostly political parties always take advantage of us. When they come, they tell us the things that we want to hear, we vote for them, the next election is Luke and Daya, they are gone. And when they come into power, they rather act as though we are servants and they are the masters. Mm. It's not supposed to be so. Mm. We are supposed to be the masters, they are supposed to be the servants. I but see. the reverse is all always true. <clears throat> I see. This is still the real talk. And today I'm talking with Kwame Ousu Danso. And uh, we've taken a different uh, perspective on the show today. It is not your usual showbiz or entertainment. Like I said, 2020 is an election year in Ghana. And every decision, every policy that will be taken by any government affects you and I. Even the road in front of your house, the one that you ply in and out to work and uh, back to your home. How good is it? I know where I live, so too. It is just recently that the people started working the road and now you can <laughs> drive smoothly. For the past three years, it has been very terrible. You keep changing your car shops here and there. Now, the decision time is here with us. What are you waiting for? What are you going to read? What are you going to listen to from those who will be doing campaigns before you take that decision? That is why we are having this discussion. Now, I'm going back to um, Kwame once again to ask him about maybe youth unemployment and whether as an unemployed person I should even vote. <laughs> Sammy, today you're asking very crucial. No, me, I've not been working after, after, after school. I still have my degree in my armpit. Well, what? And, and you know, we will from us. You've not, working, you've not been working, but you've not been working, but you've employed people. <laughs> <laughs> should I be? Should I be good? Uh, but now, do you know what I hear? Yeah. Some people are saying that yeah. I'm struggling. Life is too difficult for me. So me, I'm not going to vote. Yeah. That is what the masses are saying. Yeah. I can I can tell you that if you are not careful, if you don't even conscientize the people, by the time we get to December, we will lose people who are going to vote, and they can account to about maybe ten percent or twenty. We can come. We, we must come to terms with the fact that. If you don't, if you decide not to vote, mm -hmm. somebody else will go and vote for the person that you don't like. That is why I want us to tackle it. So that. you see, I can appreciate that there's a lot of apathy. If you recall, Imani Ghana conducted a survey, and many Ghanaians are saying, "Ah, Charlie, 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 2020, we are no not sure what we're going to see." But yeah. that's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's a misnomer. The point is that if you fail to vote, somebody will go and vote for the party that you are running away from. Mm. So go out and exercise your franchise. But I'm saying that vote based on policies. Ba vote based on things that you feel whichever government that you're voting for will do in your interest. Mm -hmm. And that is the only way forward for us. Mm -hmm. You see, if the young people in this country knew our worth and we were not sharply divided on political lines, and it's, 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 it's very sad for me to say this because it appears that all of us mm -hmm. are divided on political lines. Extreme political partisanship and that mm -hmm. that is a that's a bane of our development in this nation but if we were united if we said that look our struggle is one if we said that we need jobs to be created we need for an enabling environment to be created so that even if i were a musician i would be able to still be in my musical trade and make money mm -hmm. nobody will live comfortably live comfortably all right then things would have been better but the point is that because we are failing to get these things it is about time that we express our displeasure through the power of the thumb. That's the only way we can demonstrate to government, whichever, that look, if you fail to do this for us, we will not give you the eight years. It's become like a cliche mm -hmm. that every government feels that, oh, they are making eight years. And that also is a problem. Mm -hmm. If people begin to tell governments that, look, if you fail to the perform, it's not a mandate. It's not a mandate. It's not mandatory. Once mm -hmm. you once you tell us they're going to do A, B, C, D, and you fail to do that in your first term, we are kicking you out. People will begin to sit up. Mm -hmm. People will begin to sit up. And so I want to plead with my colleagues, my brothers, my mm -hmm. sisters, my mm -hmm. big brothers, my junior brothers, who have taken the decision not to vote in 2020, to go out and vote. Because if, if you don't go and vote, somebody will go and vote. And the person that you are running away from will still be in power, power, for instance, mm. or will come to power mm. and not do the things that you wanted, you know, from, from your leaders. Okay. And, and, and 
And it's your right. It's your franchise. You must exercise it. So I want to plead with them. Mm -hmm. But you see, but let's also make sure that we do things that will provoke, you know, and 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 and, and let the government and let the, the, the conscience of government be packed behind the realities. Okay. Good. Now, let me do this as my last question for this segment. We're going to do this again, maybe every week, if Kwame is not going to be very busy every week, we'll try to give you a session like this. I know showbiz people are very influential. Anytime you call a showbiz personality to talk politics, they have this fear that, hey, if I mention NPP, if I mention NDC, my career is dead. There are so many examples around. We can talk about Kwabna Kwabna and co supporting NPP. We can talk about Lucky Mesa and co supporting and NPP and matters arising. Now that we are in the year and they are also powerful, they are also influential, they have numbers. If I tell you the numbers, Shatawale and Stoneboy and Co, they control, you'll be marveled. Should they also have a say? Should they also be bold to come out to say that, okay, this year we think that the country needs this party, we need this personality to lead us? Should why, they be bold to face it like Why that? shouldn't they? I mean, elsewhere, you have Jay Z, you have Beyonce, you have all these celebrities supporting, for instance, Obama. Mm -hmm. It's never wrong. It's never wrong. But you see, it is always wrong because of how we do it. Mm -hmm. Or it appears wrong because of how we do it. And I shudder to say this, alright? Mm -hmm. But there was this video of a lady circulating on social media that she's disappointed in Sarko mm. Yes. There's what what was her problem? And I'll explain. Mm -hmm. The lady said that is it that Sarkozy is not finding any um, wrong. wrong or in anything this, wrong in, in with this, this government? Administration? Is, it, is, it, is it that this government is so sacrosanct? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they are holy. <clears throat> it's angelic. <laughs> that absolutely nothing is wrong with it. Mm. And she has a point. You see, because Sarkozy was very loud, very vocal, did a song, you know, Doom, so, Doom, so, I remember that song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very, very. Yvonne Nelson and back on a demonstration. Mm. It is not wrong. It is never wrong. Because at the time, the reality was that we had doom so. Mm -hmm. And these people, like you said, have a larger following. Mm -hmm. And they needed to use their platform to communicate to government and tell government that, look, Charlie, we too, we get following, you know. Mm -hmm. If you don't do the things that we want, we will make I'm sure you are out of. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is never wrong for any, poli any musician or celebrity to mm -hmm. throw their weight behind a political party. But oftentimes it's how they do it. Mm -hmm. And they do it such that it appears that they rather belong to one political party and they don't belong to the other political party. And mm -hmm. so whatever it is that the party that they support does, they find nothing okay. absolutely wrong with it. And that's always the problem. But if they, are, if they are guided by their conscience and they are very principled enough to ascertain the realities, mm -hmm. okay, and to appreciate the real struggles of the people, and do things that will inure to the benefit of their following, then I'm not sure anybody's going to have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have a problem. Since well, I said the president has performed a best man. Yeah. He gave him 17%. He, he, 17 yeah. And that is that is opinion. Mm -hmm. Why must anybody call him out? Mm -hmm. Because he's Shatawali. Why is he not a human being? He's not Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. He's Ghanaian. Patriotism first. The government, the president said it. Mm -hmm. That we must all be citizens. Mm -hmm. And not spectators. Citizens and not spectators. Mm -hmm. So if you are a citizen, then it means that patriotism must you know, must, must, must be par excellence, I must move above, mm. you know, your political leanings, all right? You must support that which is good mm -hmm. and not support that which is bad. It's that simple. Should their endorsement or support be based by uh, commercial values? Oh, and okay. instance, Why not? If uh, a shatawale... <laughs> 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 Sorry. We are in this business for money. Uh -huh. If... The NDC has money uh -huh. to go and call Shatawali to perform. Uh -huh. Why not? Not only to perform. Oh, to endorse them. Without a word or two. But you see, but I would find a problem with endorsement. What are you endorsing? Are you endorsing because don't contradict of yourself? Your, from no, 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 no. Let, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not contradicting myself. I'm mm -hmm. saying that mm -hmm. when they are called upon to perform mm -hmm. on platforms, why not? Mm -hmm. They are going to charge. They are going to make money. No, but you, you said you have a problem with endorsement. That that, that is yes. what I'm saying. Now that. endorsement. Don't no, yourself. no, and you know the article. You, you, okay, uh, you have earlier said that. Let me. You should be bold to state a position. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Let me. Yes, but what are you endorsing? That's why I'm saying that. What are you endorsing? Are you endorsing it because you've been given money to endorse it? 
or you are endorsing it because you have listened to their politics, okay. uh, their policies yeah, critically, okay. and you are saying that I want to support this political okay. party. But when it comes to giving you money to perform at a craft store, then why not? Mm. You are saying, "Mahama paper, Mahama paper, make your money and go." Okay. You understand? If the MPP calls you to come and sing, you say, "Nana beba, Nana beba," you take your money, you go. <laughs> but the reality is that <laughs> if you were asked, or can you independently? without being pushed by money mm -hmm. come out to say that i am supporting this one political party because of the policies that they have brought in because the policy the policies will benefit my following mm -hmm. or my followers mm -hmm. that for me is something that i can work with and okay. especially because they have so much following and they have so much influence mm -hmm. and and that they must use the influences that they have mm -hmm. positively for I the see. benefit of the nation all right, it has been the real talk with Kwame O. Sudan, so I would let him go, but then let him <laughs> summarize everything we've said, especially now that we've started a different segment here on the real talk to give you some information to enlighten you as we head towards election day, which is somewhere December 7th, 2020. So, I mean, first of all, I'll say that people should go out and vote, it's mm -hmm. their rights, and in our democratization, that's one of the basic tenets that we must uphold. We must uphold it with all the blood, with all the sweat, with all the tears that we have. Mm -hmm. We must uphold that. We must go and vote and elect the leader that we so desire. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, one thing that is eating into the fabric of our democracy is the extreme partisan policy, you know, politicization. Mm -hmm. We must begin to check that. Mm -hmm. And that is translating into ethnicity. Minim. You know, and ufriha, and ufriha, and ufriha. The currency example. It has recipe mm -hmm. for genocide. Mm -hmm. We must begin to look at issues from a nationalistic perspective. Mm -hmm. We are all Ghanaians. What are the issues? MPP so on my napko. On my way, on my way. On my way, on my way, on my way. Okay, napko for nukai into your mukau. So that's a problem. That's a challenge. I don't want my brother to be working and not getting paid. Mm -hmm. So that's a real challenge. How do we address those challenges? Free SS is somebody about free SS is no, it's bedeviled with challenges, whether we like it or not, right? Mm -hmm. It is chopping about 60% of our revenue. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. All right. So how do we address those? Is it, you know, is it sustainable? Is it not sustainable? So we must begin to interrogate those issues. And I beg our, our fellow brothers and sisters, everything that you say they want to insult you, it's not right. You see, <laughs> no, no, no. Sammy, I don't I don't mind people yeah. coming out to lash me. I don't know. I don't know. I I've moved beyond that. Yeah. Right? But you see. Let's begin to look at the substance of what people say, the information, yeah. rather than the form, mm. and rather than what you think should be right. If the person is saying something that you disagree, why not disagree with the person, with but also facts. look at it from disagree a disagree with yeah, facts. but disagree on a nationalistic perspective. Okay. How is the person saying? Is it true that the collapse of Mel's Gold, the mm. collapse of GN Bank, the mm. collapse of all the other I banks that we have, ideal finance, ideal finance, and all the other financial institutions that we have, mm -hmm. have affected? The employment, uh, I mean, uh, has As skyrocketed, mm. you know, uh, unemployment. Thing. It's a fact. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fact. You know, so these are real issues that we have to look at. We have to look at them dispassionately, not from political perspective, but from a realistic, ideal perspective. And that's the only way we can move this thing. Thank you so much, Kwame Osudan, so for your time here on The Real Talk on Sabiflex TV. And like I said, if you are also a lover of such an information, make sure you share this. Make sure you can even come to our studio uh, to share your contribution as well, because we are ready to do this. We need to make a good choice. We need to make sure that moving forward, you and I will live comfortably. At least we can afford three square meal a day. And so I'm like starting a project that I would need you on board. Okay. It's called the Future Today Campus Project. Mm -hmm. So we are hitting the senior high schools to begin to conscientize them and, you know, rejuvenate, if you will, their minds about governance. And we need to start from the, from, from the grassroots, okay. you know, to, to let them know exactly what we mean when we say governance and how they are directly involved in this. So I would need you. No problem. Involved. We are part of this and it is a movement that I want you to be part of as well. Thank you so much. And I want to say big ups to Currency Digital Rasta as well as Richie Flex. They are the producers and directors of the show. This man will be here again. No Summit Flex. I promise you. <laughs> we are out of here. Take care. Thank you.